Usually I put a preset on this because I like to cheat and presets are awesome. Hey, how's it going? Brian O'Donnell here. Welcome back to another video. So today I've got a really cool photo shoot in mind, which will be really easy to recreate in your own homes and it'll have a really powerful look to the image. So all I'm going to use for this shoot today is one light bulb. So, so this is just a simple light bulb. It's one of those see-through ones. I didn't want to use one of the ones that have long strings inside because that looks kind of tackier, those energy saving ones. So go you for saving energy, but if you want to make a cool one, use one of these old fashioned energy consuming ones. Anyway, so the plan for today, there's a black background behind me and that's going to go well with this image because I want a moody look to it. And basically I'm going to have this light bulb attached to a string, hang it from above and have loads of light bulbs all around the place hanging from strings above in different position. And then there's going to be one light bulb hanging about here or over here on this side and I'm going to be touching this one. All the other light bulbs are going to be turned off just hanging there and the one I'm touching is going to be on with light shining out of it onto my face so it's kind of got that powerful feel if you imagine every one of them is turned off apart from the light touch which is lit up. So that's what we're going to be doing today and I'm going to show you exactly how to edit it once we get the pictures made. So let's go down, let's attach this to string and let's get taking those photos. Alright, so this is it on the string now. I made the string really long so then I can hold it from different heights if I want it lower or higher without my hand getting in frame. And the only reason I was using a knife is because I couldn't find a scissors. So definitely only use a scissors, don't use a knife. That was not very smart. As you can see, it looks pretty moody against the black background. Or maybe it won't now, but once you get a few, few of them together, it'll look pretty cool. So all you need to do now is hold the string in a certain position, take a photo, hold it somewhere else, take a photo. But before you start taking the pictures of the light bulbs in different spots, take one photo of you just sitting here in the position you're gonna be in as if you're touching a bulb. And what you need to do, you need to lock your focus on where I am right now because the bulb beside my face will be in focus because it's in the same focus plane. But if I have a bulb up here, it should be really blurry. As you can see now, it's blurry. But if you have autofocus on and it autofocuses to this, it'll be in focus. And if everything's in focus, it looks really weird and really Photoshop. So make sure, take a picture of yourself, lock the focus, and then just put your light bulb all around the place. Take loads of photos. So originally the plan for this video was to go through the Photoshop process on how to combine all these light bulbs into the same picture, but I've covered a lot of similar stuff to that in other tutorials and I did a kind of step by step on my Instagram if you slide across on carousel on this post of light bulbs. So we'll skip the Photoshop part, jump straight into Lightroom editing because I know most people use Lightroom way more than Photoshop. So I'm going to show you all the steps on Lightroom on how to make this photo look 10 times better. So let's jump straight into editing. Now, the software I'm gonna use is gonna be Lightroom on the desktop. And there's two versions of Lightroom on the desktop. There's the Lightroom Classic desktop one, and there's the newer Lightroom one that matches up with the mobile and iPad. And I like this one because it's the same layout as the mobile app and the iPad app because that's what I'm used to and it's so much cleaner. The other one's apparently better for getting the technical corrections right because your mouse kind of clicks into place every time you slide. But I wait for this one, this one's way cleaner and way more easy to use. So, usually I put a preset on this because I like to cheat and presets are awesome. So these are a list of my presets. Uh, these are the ones I use most often. The one I'd use here would be Moody Clicks. If I just tap that, as you can see, hold on, I'll get this up for you. As you can see, it just makes such a difference. That's one click and then you can work from there. I mean, look at the details like on the hair and the eyes. That's before, that's after. I mean, that's, that's insane. That's why presets are awesome. But I'm showing you how to edit without a preset. I don't sell any presets because, I don't know, I don't know if there's a big demand for my presets out there, but if there is a big demand, just let me know. I can I can set them up for you guys to get and then you can edit the same way I do or at least get a base of what I do and then work your own style off from there. But yeah, let me know if you want some presets. I'm not currently selling them. So this tutorial, curves are, so if you go to curves, it's this big S thing. If you drag it up, it makes it really red. If you drag it down, it makes it really weird. It's a really complicated thing. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna keep it simple. We're gonna avoid the curves altogether because I want to show you guys how to make cool things without blowing your brains away. And if some higher end, more professional editors are watching this, they might be shocked that I'm gonna do it without a curve because curves are very popular to use and very useful. But to make this tutorial easy, I'm gonna use no curves. But yeah, I think if you're a beginner or if you're like just kind of dabbling in hobby photography, I think that's good news that I'm not using curves because curves are, yeah, they're confusing. So 
first thing I do, I go to the light section. There's all your tabs you can open up. I go to light, I just play around and fix it slightly. So I'll up the exposure a bit and up the shadows a bit so I can see what I'm working with. Make it a little bit contrasty. If I put the highlights up to the top, it blows out all the detail. As you can see, the bulbs can't be seen anymore. If you go to the bottom too far, it looks horrible. So I'll just decrease the highlights a little bit to see a little bit more detail. Whites, I will slide across, slide back. What looks best? Probably about there. And then blacks, I'm gonna crush because I want all those wrinkles in the background. Okay, so if I drag the blacks up, as you can see, there's wrinkles all over the background, above there, in the background. I don't wanna see any of them. So if I drag the blacks really far down, they all disappear, but then I'm affecting the rest of the photo. So I'll drag the blacks down just a little bit, and then I can edit all these out afterwards. So that's your basic adjustments done. Then I go straight to color. Now for color, you can use this eyedropper thing where you tap in the eyedropper and then select an area and it might do the white balance for you, but it's not often that accurate. So if you tap on a really dark area, it's meant to fix the white balance for you, but as you can see, I'm tapping loads of different dark areas and it doesn't always get it right. So I'm just gonna do it naturally. So I just want my temperature up, maybe it's just plus two, and I'm gonna decrease my tint because I like when these kind of moody pictures turn a bit green. Now this is too green right now, but I'm gonna be fixing it up, so don't worry about that. And I'll decrease the saturation just to about minus 10. Cool, then jump straight to color mixer. I had a video made way a few months ago about what color mixer does. So basically, this is a selective editor. So if I go to yellow and I slide up here, it makes my face and everything really green. And if I slide down, it makes it more skin tone again. So I'm gonna go way to the bottom of this so it looks a lot more natural on the skin. And then I'll just play around the saturation. I'll probably up it a bit so then I look a bit more tan because, ah. Call it tanned, especially us Irish who are extremely pale. <laughs> so just fiddle around with these settings. I swipe up, I swipe down, what looks best. Maybe I'll increase saturation of the green a little bit. This blue, swipe up, swipe down. This is changing the background as you can see. So I'll just go up a little bit. Do I need saturation? Probably not. Is this making a difference? Yeah, not really. I'll leave everything else as it is. So that looks pretty moody already. Here's the before, here's the after. We're already getting this kind of cool green dark contrasty background it kind of has a good feel to it especially from before when it was all cold and blue so then i go to effects now do not crank up clarity that does not look good that is disgusting do not drag down clarity because oh god clarity keep it within 10 if you go past 10 you're doing too much so i'll probably do i do 11 no i'll do 10 and i'll up the texture a little bit, I'll actually make it less than 10. I'll make it about six. Uh, vignette is good for moody photos. I always put them on just a small vignette. If you go this way, it makes them black. If it goes this way, it makes a white vignette. Looks like a school portrait. So I'm just gonna bring a vignette a little bit. And as you can see, it just darkens the edges ever so slightly. So that's all for effects. Detail, we won't need any of that in this picture. Optics, we won't need any of that. And geometry, everything looks pretty good there. So. First, I'm gonna crop it. So you go to this tool here, press original, and then press four by five. This is the Instagram ratio. I'll make it a little bit smaller, and I'm gonna put my eyes on the third lines because that's where the most important part of your picture should lie. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm losing a bit. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger here and drag myself up a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty moody. It also focuses on me more as a subject. So now is the really cool part, which really gets your image looking moody. So press on linear gradient and all you do, you drag up from the corner, which makes a linear gradient. Now all you do is scroll up to exposure and decrease the exposure of that corner. And as you can see, I'm blending in with the bottom, which is really cool. Now, if you want to apply these settings again and again, you can keep drawing linear gradients and it'll do the same settings over and over, but I really don't like doing that. So every time I do linear gradient, I just re-tap on it, draw a new linear gradient, go to exposure, lower a little bit. This could be going too far on the exposure, but I can always fix it up. Tap on a new linear gradient, go from the top left corner, and I kind of do all the corners like that. Now, as you can see, the wrinkles are still very much there. So all you have to do here, you go to the brush and make your brush kind of small and just brush over all the wrinkles. Now this is gonna be a really cool trick. So I'm just brushing over the wrinkles area. You can't see any changes happening now because I haven't made a setting to apply yet. But basically all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw over all the wrinkles. Then I go down to clarity, decrease the clarity and decrease the texture. Those wrinkles are blending in just a little bit more into the background now. Now I repress on the brush tool, make it slightly bigger and I'm gonna draw around everywhere. This time I'm gonna do my exposure down low before I start drawing so I can see what I'm doing. And now everywhere I draw, it's gonna darken. 
So you just, I don't want to darken myself, I just want to darken the background. So I'm just painting away, slowly just making the background darker. It's a really cool trick, this brush tool. It's also on the mobile and the iPad, and I use it all the time. It's just so handy for quick edits. Now, behind my head there, I don't want to see that background. I'm a, I want myself blending in. So I'll make a new brush tool. I'll lower the exposure of it quite a bit, and I'll just brush by the back of my head and my shoulder. It's still blending in a little bit, so we'll go a little bit darker. That's pretty cool. And I'll get rid of the side of my arm. That could look kind of extreme. Maybe I'll make this brush a little bigger here for this. That's looking kind of moody though. I'll probably make this uh, vaguely darker, just paint around the place. I always like to fiddle around with this quite a lot. And that's looking quite moody. So this is what it looked like at the start, and this is what it looks like now. So that's pretty cool. Now I think the temperature could be a bit too far, so I'll make it a little bit colder again, maybe plus one. Now, if you want, you can you can go in and make some adjustments to skin features or anything like that. Or a quick way to do this: tap on this circles. Ugh. A quick way to do this is to tap on this circle tool, draw a circle around a face. This is what I tend to do. It just makes them really clean. And scroll down, find clarity, decrease a little bit, and texture, decrease a little bit. That just basically smoothens out the face. It loses a bit of detail, but I mean, it speeds up your workflow so much. So, now, zoom in. I always do this on the eyes. So, go to your eyes. Also, if you want to like a little, fix a little bop, you just go to healing brush, tap on heal, and it just fixes it for you, which is kind of flaked. So, go to this circle tool, draw a circle about the size of an eye, drag it over the eye, make it a little bit bigger than the eye, and then just go to exposure, up your exposure a little bit, and then I always decrease my temperature a little bit. That just makes your eyes a little bit bluer, which is quite nice. Now right click on it, press duplicate, then you can drag this duplication onto your other eyes. The same edits are applied to both eyes, and now you've got cooler eyes. This is what your eyes look like originally, that's what it looks like now with everything changed. So it looks pretty cool and that's a pretty moody picture. Now, looking at it now, it looks like I've overdone the old softness on the skin. So I press on this, press on this big circle and I'll bring back a little bit of detail because I don't want to lose that much detail. I look like a ghost. Last thing you need to do on this picture, go again to your circle tool, draw a circle over the light and crank up that exposure. Boom, it's lining up. So, there you go. That's kind of how you put a fake light on that light and it looks like it's lighting up. So, if you want to check out the PhotoFox tutorial, check out my Instagram, it's really easy. This is how I combined all these light bulbs into the same picture. Or if you have loads of string and a truck ton of light bulbs in your house, you can just hang them all from the roof. But uh, I don't imagine everyone has that many light bulbs. So, really hope you enjoyed that editing tutorial. I've been asked a lot for an editing tutorial and that is step by step. I'll show you every step there without the complicated curves, without all the little nitty gritty stuff that you see the advanced photographers doing. Not that you're not advanced, like I don't even do most of that stuff. Am I advanced? I don't know. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that editing tutorial. If you want some more different editing styles, that's how you get a moody picture with the black background. That specific style is really good for moody pictures or pictures with the black background, pictures in the dark with shadows, that kind of stuff. Especially the gradients you drag in from the corners, the linear gradient is so key because once you darken those edges, it really draws your eye to the subject and makes the overall picture really cool and really moody. So if you did enjoy that video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing because you guys are awesome and I'd appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you soon.